My name is Damon Inexplicable Computer Genius Ware. And this is Kevin, finally top billing in a Superman movie, Schneider. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a black and white review. Nothing makes it better than vanilla and chocolate. And since you're black and I'm white, that makes it more special for the audience. Did you say black? You called him black? He's black. Oh, he said it again. This racism is killing me inside. White. You are black. And the who cares? Who cares, baby? This week's episode of a Black and White Review is 1983's Superman 3, the third installment in the original Superman franchise starring Christopher Reeve as Superman and Richard Pryor as Gus Gorman, Annette O'Toole as Lana Lang, Robert Vaughn as Ross Webster, Annie Ross as Vera, and Pamela Stevenson as Lorelai. And, you know, a lot of returning casts of actors from the previous two Superman movies. Richard Lester returns as a director. He took over the second one when Richard Donner kind of got fired or kicked off. Or There's a lot of drama behind the Superman movies. Of course. And so this one's also, and it's written by David Newman and Leslie Newman. And I honestly wish I would have found out if the, the, what their relation was because they have the same name. So I wonder if they're, like, siblings or, like, married. But I don't know. Yeah. I don't care because they didn't write a very good movie. Weren't the pro- I feel like the producers were kind of related at the end credits, too. I, I think there's a Probably. lot. I feel like family and business don't mix that well no matter what. So I'm not surprised there was drama. Well, I think with, with, with this movie. Well, I think it's just whoever owned the rights to Superman at the time, like the name, just because like, um, kind of with like how James Bond is, like the, the Broccoli family owns James Bond. <laughs> James Bond was written by, um... Wait, the wait, bro- who wrote James Bond? Is it spelled the same way? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like Albert Broccoli, the family, the Broccoli family owns James Bond, but James Bond was written by... Is she not Ian Fleming? No. Eh. Oh, okay. Crap. Remember. No, this is going to bother me now. Is, is, is it really? It really is. Yeah. It's an iconic book series and movie series. Who? I think it's Ian Fleming. Ian Fleming is the way the person that made James Bond? Yeah, he wrote the books. Yes. It is Ian Fleming? It is Ian Fleming. Okay. That was going to bother me. <laughs> In this episode, that's not about James Bond at all. What if I was lying to him to continue the episode, folks? Fine. Oh, <laughs> I'm go- 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 Google it. I'm confident enough in myself. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So uh, what this one is about is the um, a, a guy who finds out he's a, com- a computer genius teams up with a evil corporate what would he be like? He, a, I, I feel like a so, I, rich socialite. I, I feel like he was a tycoon. Like yeah, I think his character tycoon. reminded me of just like I'm gonna buy stuff and make sure I'm the only one that has the thing he wants. So he was just like embargoing shit. Yeah, so, tycoon. So he's so he's trying to kill Superman because Superman's getting in the way of his evil plans. But something else happens to Superman because the kryptonite they try to give him. Yeah, yeah, actually make him evil. Oh, because that because that's how even the IMDb description of this movie it, it's it takes so long to get to Superman being evil part, but it's like oh, it's like the halfway point of this movie. Oh probably. my god! But they try and make it it's like oh, it's the main point of the movie. It's, it's the most not, memorable part of the movie. Yeah, but that's not hard. <laughs> yeah. So, Damon, what did you think of the movie? I mean, everyone's favorite Superman movie is Superman 3. What was the title of Superman 3 again? It didn't have one. Oh, exactly. See, well, that... I mean, the, the other one, Superman, the first one is Superman the movie, which, mm. why not just call it Superman? Superman 2 is just Superman 2. And Superman But then 3. there's like the Richard Donner cut and the lesser cut. Superman movies are confusing because there's so many different versions of them. Yeah, but long story short, no, this movie was dog shit. I did not like anything about it. Like anything about it. I didn't like, I was bored for all of it. I think because I was just so upset with how Richard Pryor was doing everything in the movie. Um, I wasn't a fan of the effects. Um, the story dragged its ass for... I think we didn't get some, the most of the conflict to almost an hour into the movie, and the thing before before that wasn't really that engaging with me. I don't know, because I have a lot of nostalgia for like the Christopher Reeve like Superman movies, yeah. and I think I may have watched the first one once, and never probably have seen the second one. Once again, maybe once, and that's a hard, that's yeah. a hard maybe. So I really, I, when I was a kid, that was like one of the first like superhero movies I ever saw was the first Christopher Reeve Superman movie. I had oh, that word. on VHS. Oh, word. And like I love that movie. Oh, I still like it. I mean, I, obviously the effects don't hold up. It's it's kind of hokey, but that's what makes it kind of great. I like the first Superman movie a lot. I just like 
I'm trying to think of, like any issues with that, but I mean it's just the effects and I, I that's I, kind of the time. I don't mind the effects. That I feel like I wouldn't have minded the effects as much in this movie if there was more heart. And I think that what you're talking about right now about the first Superman movie, the effects are hokey, but that kind of sells like the yeah. being, how endearing that is to you and how it holds up in other people. I think I was I was I made a joke, but I understand why this movie is like the worst. I I would consider this yeah. the worst Superman movie. Like I, people I, people can't talk if you talk trash on Man of Steel or. Any any other watch your man three guys <laughs> like well, <laughs> before you say this is the worst thing ever no it is, yeah. it is not the worst Superman prog this is oh the worst the, well I mean I've bad. never seen Superman for the quest for peace I've heard that oh, apparently that's even I, worse did, I always forget there's that's how little I know that's about the one that has the shit. hyphen uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, that, that, so, oh, so the second one is when it's like Zod and like his cronies show up mm-hmm. and they uh, just try to take over the world while Superman's like falling in love with Lois Lane and giving up his powers and oh my God. then realizing that, you know, he needs to stop Boring. these guys. That's the second one. I, I The second one's okay. Mm, I don't like okay. it as much, but it's it's decent. Mm. It ties into the first one, like, super hard because the first one opens with Zod going to, into the Phantom Zone. Gotcha. And, uh, yeah, I, but these movies are always riddled with, like, a lot of bullshit. I mean, the second one was made at, like, the same time as the first one, and they fired the director and replaced him with Richard Lester. And this one, Richard Lester's credit as the director of this movie, the third one, mm-hmm. but I'm pretty sure he got, like, booted, too. Like, I think something happened with that. I don't, really? I don't remember the full story of the Richard Lester one with Superman 3, but that's that's why with Superman 2, you'll notice that you might find different versions of it. Like, it's one of those movies that, like, there's, like, you can watch the one version or you can watch the Richard Donner cut. And... Like, I've seen both of them, and they're both, like, fine. One of them ends with the same thing, how the first one ends with him, like, traveling back in time. Yeah. To fix the problem, and mm-hmm. it's like, that's stupid. You did that in the first one. Why would you have him do that again? <laughs> it worked so well the first time. Why not? Yeah. Also, at this time, Superman's, like, rules and how his powers worked were still kind of up in the air, because it's the 70s, 80s. Like, Superman didn't become more, like, how as we know him, like, put the, like, the basis of his powers until, like, the late 80s. Like, Lex Luthor at this point in time is still, like, a mad scientist. He doesn't become the rich socialite character until, like, the mid-80s. Oh, so he's not, like, a like a huge business type? No, no, a huge no. Business that's man. why Gene Hackman's just, like, in the first one, he's just kind of like, Lex Luthor, criminal genius, and that's all he does, because the idea of him being a rich tycoon hasn't been done yet. Like, I would actually argue Superman 3, this villain, Ross Webster, is more like a traditional Lex Luthor than Lex Luthor is in, in the original ones. I, I was but Gene Hackman's great, so. I was definitely getting Lex Luthor vibes from him. Yeah. Just the, even with his um, assistance with them being women, yeah. and that, that reminded me of Lex Luthor, where it's usually the two, I don't know. Yeah, Kyra, his sister is uh, Vera. She has, like, a Mercy Graves kind of feel to her a little bit. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. You're, you're, you're not, ugh, Mercy Graves, what a deep, night. Nice. I'm, not, not even the deepest cut, but still, just for for all you guys out there, we're nerds. Yeah, we're <laughs> going, nerds. We'll, we'll probably talk about Mercy Grace a little later. She's not in this movie, but yeah. you know, we're gonna talk about a lot of Superman stuff this episode. Hell yeah, man! Because realistically, like this movie is just yeah. um, it's it's a, ve- it's, so, a, it's a it's a ve- it's a vehicle for like the true like the true <laughs> the, the true point <laughs> that I suffered two hours yeah, so, of this. So honestly, when for my viewing of Superman three, I remember it being worse because I'd seen this before. Really? So watching it again, I was like, this has its moments. Like I was entertained a few times. Like I like the whole Superman being evil because it's so cheesily evil. Like I kind of think it's hilarious where it's like him pushing the Eiffel <laughs> not the Eiffel Tower, the Leaning Tower of Pisa yeah. straight, and then like that guy who just sells little Leaning Tower of Pisa. That's why he's like, hey. Oh, what are you doing? Mamma mia. He just breaks My them. business. I mean, all this stuff he does when he turns evil so stupid. Yeah, and it's also I do I did when they were trying to distinguish between how you knew Superman was turning evil, he just stopped shaving. There, also, his, <laughs> his costume gets darker too somehow. Oh, okay. Did you notice that? No, I didn't. Yeah, the notice. red becomes more of like a maroon. It's like, it looks a little dirtier, <laughs> dingier yeah. Superman costume. Honestly, it looks a little bit more like the Brandon Rouse Superman costume. Oh, for the color palette, you mean? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Now that I'm thinking about it. Brendan Ralph's the evil Superman. <laughs> Is that why no one wants Brendan Ralph? I mean, that's technically Superman 5, because that's Kintar this series, technically. Wait, that's canon with this? Yeah. Because always... that movie was basically a love letter to the Richard Donner ones, which is like, why yeah. would you do this? Yeah, that's boring. It's been how many years? That makes sense why it's so boring. I hate that movie. <laughs> But and it's so, not just because it was directed by an alleged pi- pedophile and starring another alleged pedophile. So many alleged, so many, so many. Yeah. <laughs> Stay away from our media. <laughs> but that's Superman Returns, and that's not what we're here to talk about. We're talking about Superman 3, David. Stop trying to talk about slightly better Superman movies. That's I don't like me. this movie. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking about this one. So this one starts out with um, Richard Pryor, who famously um, 
didn't want to be in this movie. He it, made a it joke. Show, it shows. He made like a joke. I think it was on Carson or a late night show, basically about like being in a Superman movie. And then the producers of Superman were like, "Oh my God, Richard Pryor, we'd love for you to be in this movie." And he's like, "It was a joke. Like I don't want to actually be in a Superman movie." And they're like, "We'll give you five million dollars." Cha ching, cha ching, cha ching. Yeah, pretty much. He's like, okay, like in his in his actual biography of Richard Pryor, he says like, "I did it because they gave me five million dollars." Well, why wouldn't the man? Why wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, how, I mean, however long it took to like to slog through the bullshit, I understand because. It's five million dollars in nineteen eighty three. Yeah, 1983, yeah. 1984. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, ooh. car money. And, yeah. and I kind of like portray like it's kind of weird because in hindsight, Richard Pryor's like character is portrayed as like this like frivolous like spending money will do like whatever. Like I wonder how he felt being like here's this. Uh, we I'm doing this for a paycheck. And like what's your character? You care a lot about money. <laughs> main, main drive of it. <laughs> you need a job. But you're bad at all jobs. And this job he somehow so the movie opens with Richard. Honestly, when this movie opens, honestly, I feel like when I if I just put this on TV, I'd be like, oh, I thought this was Superman three. This is clearly some Richard Pryor comedy because that's what this movie's trying to be. It's trying yeah. to be a weird Richard Pryor. comedy. Throughout the entire movie, it's trying to use Superman as a vehicle for a Richard. Like you just said, that's for a Richard Pryor is. comedy, and it doesn't fit the tone at no. all. It's just also because Richard Pryor doesn't sell a single fucking thing in this movie, and it's de- it's depressing because Richard Pryor is a cornerstone of so much media, like both live entertainment, like visual like it's just he's a man's a legend and yeah. if you if I showed this movie to someone with no prior context of who Richard Pryor is because some people are not aware of that it does happen they would have a poor opinion of this man because yeah. this movie just it it robs him of everything of everything he does well but Dave, <laughs> no, Dave, five million I dollars I know I can't even be mad at the it's, man it's also bizarre that like he really is like the second main character. Like this isn't a cheat episode. He it's, really is the second main yes. character. Him and Superman have what three scenes together? Maybe uh, if that. Two? If it's only that. at the end. They they meet in like the middle under like weird pretenses, and then he sees him again at the end. They I'm, have like no relationship I, at all. I, I'm waiting. Does he save them in the beginning or something? No, I I don't even remember that. This movie opens with like a bunch of like slapstick comedy, and it's like and also why? and also what what you're talking about too. Like, because are we getting just, can we just like talk through the movie? Because I'm not even going. Can we get right yeah, into spoilers? Let's get, was, fuck, so dude. I <laughs> found this movie a little in- entertaining. I didn't, I probably won't watch this again anytime soon. But if someone wants to be like, let's have a Superman like marathon of these. Oh four, yeah, I would like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, like I will, I'll never ever say that I'll never watch this for any of uh, that has to be. That's the only purpose for this movie though is like a marathon binge drink drink type thing for this movie. I could, I, I could see maybe. I think Christopher Reeves is still good in this though. I mean, he still feels like Superman when he's doing Superman things. Yeah, for for what I remember, but when he's Superman, evil, it's like. Honestly, him being evil in this kind of reminds me of Toby being evil in Spider-Man 3. Oh, shit. <laughs> which, which, honestly... <laughs> also, I love how you didn't say his full name. <laughs> Toby McGuire. Well, Toby. No, no I, I I may just start calling him Toby now. His but... name's Toby. <laughs> it's weird when you don't say the full name of a... Uh, a Sylvester... Sylvesterity. Well, this is I'm saying two words at once. Mm-hmm. Why? Why? Like when you hear a, like just the first name of a celebrity, it's kind of weird. Like Sylvester Stallone's name is Sylvester. <laughs> you're like, you're like hearing it out loud, you're like Sylvester. Like, how often are you hanging out with a guy named Sylvester? Unless I'm just like just balls deep in Looney Tunes, not a lot. <laughs> That's like a cartoon cat. Yeah. So. I chill with Sylvester all the time. <laughs> sometimes he had a kid, and sometimes he didn't. What happened to that kid? Oh, maybe it's just the weekend. Protective custody. What would you? <laughs> oh, no, you say protective custody? Yeah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> that sounds way more dire. <laughs> Then weekend parent Kevin. I don't know. <laughs> I'm the dog. He's a cartoon one. cat. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> You're right. Who gives a shit? <laughs> Sylvester was a terrible father. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> um, oh Jesus Christ! But yeah. yeah uh, so Richard Pryor is like they're like you can't have unemployment because you keep filing and you keep getting fired from jobs and he's like cartoons and be like well what am I supposed to do and then he just happens to see on a matchbook like try being a computer programmer you'll make money and he's like I'll give it a shot so then he goes to be a computer programmer and then finds out accidentally like he's the best computer programmer ever because that's he, how computers work in 1983 he can make binary stuff happen guys like there's he's like bi- a god bilateral there were there was a woman in the scene that was struggling with like hey computer nerds out there I don't know if this is a real thing or not but there, the scene was like it was a woman in the same like uh, computer Classroom. class yeah. that she was in and she and, and the teacher was like you'll never 
uh, uh, connect the two bilateral coordinates this way, and Richard Pryor does it, and he's like, oh my god, you effectively... How did you do that? I did not quite do possible. You just, you just made it, and also, this, also, what's crazy about this movie, too, is just, like, I actually did notice, like, more of, like, racial tropes in terms of, like, he's kind of like a magical Negro in this regard, where he just, like, kind of sits down, and there's no real reason yes. why... Like, there's why no reason for him to be great no, there's, there's, no re- no, there's no reason for him to be, him to be great at this, just in, inexplicable, like, whoa, 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 look at this, here's my, like, superpower for, like, like this, if this is how I'm going to. <laughs> I would just talk it up that like it's 1983 and these screeners don't know how computers work. Probably that's probably that's, pro- that's, pro- that's probably a part so of it's it. Like you could just but, happen to be a prodigy at computers. It's like no, that's not how it works at all. But yeah, sure, why not? But they're also this script just yells like white people trying to like talk like black people or just like how Richard Pry- Car- Richard Pryor's character is characterized throughout the movie. It's little small little things that are just little stereotypes that I that like I said that I know. So we can go mm-hmm. as, as as we're going through like the the, okay. the, the beats of it. We can, we, we can talk about it but like I said I'm not going this movie does not deserve like beat for fucking beat it's just it, yeah. it's not worth it it feels like the movie drags and I don't want the podcast to drag <laughs> yeah so then we cut to finally we finally get to some super well Clark Kent oh well it opens with Superman oh wait I do want to bring this up so what so after like so we find out Richard Pryor is a computer genius again we still haven't seen Superman or anything like that and then the opening credits are like really weird and bad like they're like kind of flying at you like they did in the first two but no two it's in space and this is like the street so it just looks weird of the credits just did you notice that no, oh oh when oh when they're, they're just like ca- zooming they, past they're like holographic almost yeah because yeah. that's kind of the same thing they did in um in Superman 1 and 2 but when they did it it's in space so it just looks like it's drifting <coughs> away oh so it's so not it doesn't look like, weird. like like shitty street art yeah <laughs> it's like, like it looked like art. a bad powerpoint presentation yeah Yes, 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 yes. I, yeah, I and it's a bunch of now. slapstick weird comedy. It's like, oh no, Jimmy Olsen got mustard Wh- on his lapel. Why was there a blind man bit going on for five minutes? I, I, I wrote every time. It was like a Rube Goldberg of just slapstick idiot comedy from like the 40s. It, it, it was just written by the Marx Brothers? What the yeah, hell is this? I, I have no idea. It just, in each time that there was one element of slapstick, I was waiting for it to make me laugh because I love slapstick comedy. It's so simple and, and, and I, I wouldn't say cheap. It's just funny, but god damn it made me mad. The movie, every time there was an attempt at comedy in this movie, I was shaking my arms were, this is, this is the image, my arms crossed on the couch no <laughs> shaking my head yeah. no so the <laughs> no, first no, no, so no, the no. first scene of superman is uh while the slapstick is happening someone gets in a car accident and they run over a fire hydrant and the fire hydrant somehow gets in the car and they start drowning in their car on land because they can't get it open and people are like slapping on the car doors to get it open and then clark kent's just walking down the street and he sees it happening he's like oh no so he quickly you know changes into superman stuff and then he like flies over and then he like peels the sunroof off and pulls the guy out but uh, while that's all happening i'm just thinking like any of you people could have saved him. No one could just break this window. <laughs> just break the window. <laughs> Superman, the Superman does not need to be saving the day. Anyone could have saved the day. You could have stepped up, citizens of Metropolis. Yeah, some someone could have even just honestly, if they all collectively like smashed an elbow, everyone, everyone get, yeah. a, every, everyone get a corner of of, of, of a window, <laughs> and, I, and I think we can do this. Something, some way, shape, or form. I didn't even think about that. I didn't even remember how the... This movie made me so upset. I didn't even remember that part of the movie. Yeah. I don't remember why that happened. Yeah, or, so so now we're, we'll, we'll see what Clark Kent's up to. And Clark Kent is going to his high school reunion back in Smallville. And he's going to take Jimmy Olsen with him to take some pictures. Because Perry White's like, sure, you can take, you know, my star reporter. Or not reporter, photographer for a high school reunion in Kansas. Sure, why not? And then Great. Lo- Lois Lane, played by uh, Margot Kidder again, she's basically being like, "Well, I'm going on vacation because I don't want to be in this piece of crap movie." So she's in one scene in this. <laughs> she's in this one scene, and then she shows up at the very end, being like, "So vacation was fun," and that's the only time you see her. This movie she knew this, this movie was garbage. This too. movie's still going on. Uh, maybe I need to go on some some more vacation. Please, Margot. Please, please. <laughs> Fine, we'll just replace you with Superman's other love interest, Lana Lang. High school reunion. High school reunion. Clark Kent's going to his high school reunion uh, at the same time. Cloris Leachman, the ball lady. Who I'm, I'm, I think it is her, and if it's not... Fight me. Whatever. <laughs> Don't even fight Kevin. If, Kevin. if Kevin's wrong, fight me. She's in like two scenes as she's in this. And like someone from the Metropolis, not Metropolis, the Daily Planet gets to go to Columbia on vacation because like that's the comedy. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Because Perry like, why do I got to be doing the bingo? Mm, like, you have to. With, uh, yeah, I want the, pictures of Spider-Man. I mean Superman. <laughs> 
it, I did get J. Jonah vibes a lot but of also, I mean, character. Yeah. Perry White came first. That is true. No, 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 to be fair, to be fair. So maybe, oh, maybe I should throw shade at J. <laughs> next, <laughs> next time. Next time, uh, anytime. Uh, who's the dude who plays J. Jonah Jameson in all the media? Um, J.J.? Uh, yeah. J.K. Simmons. Yeah, J. Next time I see J.K. Simmons, I'm going to see J.K. Simmons. I'm going to be like, hey, listen, you're stealing, you're st- you're stealing Perry's thunder, you piece of shit. I forget, who, I forget the, the same guy who's Perry White in this. He's also Perry White in the other ones. I forget what his name is, though. Damn it. Oh, he's the same actor um, yeah, yeah, in, he's, all, he's, in all, he's, yeah, he's in all like, four Superman movies? I don't know about the fourth one. Okay. But I know the other two. Fair enough. Fair enough. But yeah, no, so, like, Clark is... Was he was was Clark using the, the reunion as an excuse to go to Small for any reason? Or was he actively... he was just going to yeah, his high school reunion. Okay, cool. It's Clark Kent. Of course he's going that's, to his high school that's reunion. That's true, that's true. There's, there's no ulterior motive for, for like, that, you know, this, corn, this corn, corn, cornbread motherfucker. He's Superman. <laughs> yeah. Kansas, born and bred. From space first, obviously, but, you know, the, the Kansas didn't rat. America. Yeah, so good. And also, I, I think this is when it cuts to... I think Richard writing the... Oh, is like because I I made something about like Richard Pryor is like he's like I think it's kind of him working. He he gets the yeah, job. He gets a job at a computer company. And it's like what I have to pay taxes. It's like yes, so, you so, need to pay taxes. Social Security. And this is what I was one of the things I was talking about when it comes to the, I don't want to do, do B for beat, but the one of the parts of the dialogue that they have Richard Pryor say is like you know I I was like I'm too old. I, I'm I was like you know I'm getting too. I don't know what is he, what does he say what does he say. No, yeah, yeah. He makes him say like, "I want to spend money. I'm too. I want a boogie boogie." They make him say. They make him say boogie boogie in this movie. Like, what the? F- Richard Pryor was like 43 when, when they when they made this. I feel like if it was a younger person, like if they did like an introducing credit type type thing, it would have fit the character more with with the decisions that he's making. But it's just like the trope of just black people wanting to be like frivolous, spend like a bunch of fucking money, have no thought of the future. Like it just all, the movie just was made me think of negative stereotypes because it was just so like shoddy i was like this could have been so many other types of dialogue for this little this small little scene but that all throughout the whole thing every time richard Pryor is like in like his character is just so bad and you think he's gonna change for the better and it just never happens he's mostly just bumbling his way into evil situations Constantly, and not like, quite grasping how evil the like, situation he's just is dumb like, like maybe that's why i'm mad like he's pretty, he's just pretty movie. for because like they make him to be like this computer genius inexplicably but he's also just so like dumb and stereotypical. Like it's just I don't know. Is he like, shucking and jiving? I feel like he's a shucking and jiving for a lot, for a lot of the movie, especially for he the does, paycheck. He does fall off of a skyscraper on skis and survive. Uh, uh, I. Uh... <laughs> that's like a major part of this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when he's trying to like give his boss. Like we we'll get to that when yeah. we we'll get to it. So but... he's at this job, and then he gets this idea to because of the taxes and because of like the the change that gets rounded off. He has this idea of like taking the the point like zero zero cents and just embezzle and, and take it for himself because like it kind of goes nowhere anyway. So he ends up getting like a ton of money, uh, insane amount of money for how many people would work at this company and get paid on a weekly basis. And just starts buying like ridiculous shit. Shows up at yeah. the same company that everyone's getting the same paycheck. And the like building they... even has that kind of part that's kind of funny. He's like, look what he's doing. He's like, ah, he's like very smart, like taking the money there, like very genius. If he's a, if he's as genius as he should be, and we think he is, then he'll be very then he won't be like spending all the money. He'll be very conservative about it. He can seem like nothing's changed. Very covert. And then, and then you of course r- real jump cut to him <laughs> being like, I'm rich. I spent all my money. <laughs> Eat a dick. Look how rich I am. I'm not thinking about the future. Woo! And then he's just like he. And he comes to work and like once again, all his coworkers making the same amount of money. And you come to work the maybe the next day or next whenever you get paid again. Maybe let's let's, let's say for devil's advocates, two weeks in a fucking. No, it is one de- week. I, I remember that. It was so. It, even, it adds more to the lunacy. Even thank you, yeah, Kevin. I, thank you for my point. Even worse, one week and you come you, back you, in, a, in a souped up shit. Like I don't even know what the fuck the car was, but it wasn't his car. He was was the car he started the job with. Like, come on, man. Come on, Rich. I saw a or figure Gus. as in like how many, how many people would have to work at this company for him to make that much money and it's like like 50,000 or something. Like, <laughs> the IMDb did the math and I, I don't I didn't write it down because I didn't care enough. What an asshole. Gus, not Richard Pryor. I, <laughs> <laughs> like I can't I can't be mad at him for yeah. five, five million dollars. Five so, million dollars. So then our villain kind of figures, okay, well since he's a criminal and I caught him as a criminal but he's also a computer genius, I can use his genius to help leverage, my evil endeavors. Leverage. So then Clark Kent is, so while, basically there's like two stories going on. That I don't think, I guess I think we said earlier, Superman and uh, Gus don't only interact about like three times in this movie, once in the middle and then once at the very end. But they keep jumping back and forth between them. 
So Clark Kent is on his high school reunion on a bus to Jimmy Olsen, and the whole time I'm just like, why are you on a bus? You're Superman. You can fly there. You can get there in a second, but you choose to ride the bus. Okay, Superman, that's fine. I mean, it's fine. Do, I you, mean, do, Jimmy's you. with you, but also, why do you need Jimmy with you? I, I don't well, know. Well, Jimmy's attached to Clark Kent and Superman. Yeah, mm-hmm. and in all in all media, like Jimmy is like, uh, no, I should say Clark Kent and Superman are Jimmy Olsen's man crush. He's like, I, I love I love Clark Kent because he's my role model. He's a great reporter, and like you know, he's gonna fuck Lois Lane eventually, and then and then Superman. He's going to save me if I ever inexplicably almost die, which happens a lot for Jimmy it's, Olsen. In some comics, he has that watch where you can alert Superman oh, when something's yeah. going on. Oh, yeah, I do know that. Was that, like, old school Superman? I think that's pretty old school Oh, Superman. okay, because I don't remember, like, the Superman, like, TV series having Jimmy Olsen with, like, a watch. I think John. he has it in the animated series from the 90s. Oh, really? He has a watch he there, does. too? Yeah. Damn, I don't remember that. But it's like, but then I, again, think, I think he uses it at one point, and that's when Supergirl shows up, and it's just like, oh, I was looking for Superman. It's like, well, um... I'm Supergirl. It's like, okay, if you have Superman's powers, also, you're hot. Because <laughs> they hook up, I think, in the comics you can, at one point. You can save me, and then we can make sweet, sweet love. But don't kill me, don't kill me. Don't break my pelvis. <laughs> please, please, please. <laughs> be gentle, be gentle, be gentle, be gentle. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, so, but... so Superman saves, so there's a chemical fire at this chemical plant on the bus right there. And, of course, Superman's going to jump in and save the day. And at the same time, Jimmy Olsen needs to get that good picture of Superman in the fire because he failed to get a picture of Superman when he saved, because when he saved the person in the car earlier. Oh so yeah, he's like, I gotta get and, that and, good per- and Perry White was like, "You need to live, eat, like fuck your camera. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> your camera should be a part of you. You should be married to your camera. Your camera is an extension of your body. <laughs> You're a photographer." Act like it. I need pictures of Superman. And so Perry White kind of makes Jimmy just be like, fuck my life. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get on top of this of this fire engine to get pictures of this fire. You know, hopefully no firemen need it to save lives or put out fires. I'm going to use it so I get the best picture I can get. I need the scope. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So Superman's, got, you know, doing things. He's saving people's lives. I probably the best, This is also, actually, I think this is a good part of the movie because you see Superman being Superman. He's saving yeah. people. He's blowing up. He's putting the fire out. And good use of powers. And he, you learn a very important plot point where it's like, you, this acid that's in here, it's perfectly fine when it's normal temperature, but when it gets too hot, it becomes super dangerous, and we'll have a, we'll have a chemical oh, like explosion, a death, and de- a death cloud. it'll be like a nukes going off, so Superman has to make sure that, that it doesn't get too hot, so he needs to put it out, so he so he goes to a lake, freezes it, picks it up, puts it over the the, the uh, chemical fire, drops it, and then it melts in time and puts out the fire. And, what, and also, just in that one scene alone, phenomenal application of Superman's powers, like, yeah. for, for for the movie, you have the flight, because he all he asks the dude is, like, where, is there a lake near here? Yeah, it's, like, X amount miles that way. It doesn't matter, Superman. Yeah. Get, 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 gets to the lake. And then he's like, okay, I need a bunch of water. I can't take all, all the water. I'm going to freeze the top layer of the lake. Ice breath. Word. Okay, now I need to move this sheet of ice delicately enough so it doesn't shatter, but then fast enough to make sure that it gets to the fire in time so the chemical explosion doesn't happen. You're definitely putting way more thought in than the writers of this movie did. That's why I didn't <laughs> want to give them credit for this. That's why I said I didn't even like this scene because all I'm thinking about is like Superman nerd. Super, I'm like comic book, comic book, comic book. It was a very cool scene just looking at everything Superman had to do to make sure no one died but it didn't make the rest of the movie good. <laughs> this is still basically the old school Superman that can kind of do anything depending yeah. on who's writing it. Like the, in Superman 2, he rebuilds part of the Wall of China with his eyes. He just rebuilds part of the Wall of China. Yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for more of an explanation. Nope, nope, that's it. <laughs> more of an explanation. He just rebuilds the Wall of China with his eyes. And that's oh. awesome. Damn, his Superman. Powers are I mean, that's also Superman 2 is where the cellophane S comes from, where he throws it at it and he like traps the one henchman for like a second and then it goes away and it's like... What a minor inconvenience. <laughs> I'll say. I'm still a Kryptonian, you know. Sure, stop you. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I mean, Superman doing Superman stuff. So Superman takes a note of like, wow, this acid is really dangerous acid and if it's, you know, not a threat when it's not hot, put that in the uh, plot point o- later. Old Superman noggin. <laughs> yes, of course. So they go... So Jimmy Olsen... Um, Ends up breaking his leg in the fire by being irresponsible and get pictures. Yeah, he was like above something. He just like I think I think an explosion happened and yeah. then he gets rocked and yeah. then he's like, nah, my leg, yeah, help he breaks me. his leg and Perry's just like, what a reporter with a, a, a not a reporter, a photographer with a broken leg. You're useless to me now. Because you see him all, in like a cast later in the all, movie. All, all the all the films melting and shit. So he didn't. Oh even yeah, he doesn't get that either. <laughs> so I forgot about that. Actually pointless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Jimmy. 
So now Clark Kent's at his high school reunion. He gets to see his high school crush, Lana Lang. Oh, I, the first thing I noticed about Lana Lang and then and then Clark Kent on the same like scene together, I was like, chin versus chin. Who will win? Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> hey, you like, leaving that tool alone. It, it didn't it didn't it didn't work because when they tried to make out, they just kept they just kept clinking. <laughs> <laughs> I did like the movie. <laughs> I would have. I, yeah, I, I, I would have been nicer. Get it. I would have been nicer <laughs> if it didn't waste my time. But yeah, it's like the dreamy, like oh, you're here, like that, like uh, that, that meat cute. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, she just complains the whole movie about how, like, why did I stay in Smallville? My life sucks. I have a kid, Superman. I mean, Clark. Was yeah? Oh yeah. I, I, I forget. Who do the we dad, know? I yeah. Forget. Okay. I think they do like a one word explanation. Of, like this is who the dad is, and he died, or they got a divorce. Whatever. Both. He's dead to me after the divorce. I don't know. Mm, mixture of the two. I don't care. The kid's yeah. just there to be like, golly, Superman! I'm Thanks. annoying! I'm annoying! I hope I don't get in trouble later. Well, gee, but I will, because the movie needs, like, to pad the time. Yeah, and then they have, like, that also, like, that high school quarterback character who's an alcoholic, Brad. who's clearly Brad. peaked at high school. Mm-hmm. No. And he keeps trying to bully Clark still, even, and it's even, adorable. Even, even his name's the laziest, like, douchebag character named Brad. <laughs> just, and, yeah, he's a security guard, alcoholic, um... He comes up to Lana in that scene and does the most, like, aggressive thing. Come on, I've... baby. I'm the only guy left it's in the sound. You got to just be with me and no thing, one else. It's the thing I've seen, like, some, like, men do. You know, like, women. Hey, hey, this is just an aggressive move with, like, someone's wearing, like, a bareback dress and, like, you're coming up to them and then you're just, like, you're not familiar with them. You put your full hand, like, on their back. It's does all... that happen in this? I don't yeah, even it's a, it's, it, it happened in the scene where he's coming over to be like, hey, Kent, like, yeah. nice seeing you. And, you know, and Lana's like, oh, Jesus, fucking Brad. And he's making her visibly uncomfortable and he's like doing the whole like I'm, I'm clearly don't respect your boundaries type of thing and just, <laughs> it's like you're a woman who does it matter what you think that, that's, his, that's his character in, he's in the bully show. alcoholic yeah punk yeah but quarterback that peaks ugh, but just like even the small little thing of just him being like I'm just gonna touch him and put my full arm on you kind of pull you towards me even though I can tell you visibly easily <laughs> you're, you're repulsed by everything I do to you but Maybe, maybe, maybe the hate will turn to love eventually. That's his character. Maybe you hate me and feel just work in the negative. Because he doesn't get, there's no redeeming quality except for later on in the movie he gets drunk enough for Richard Pryor to one-up him. That's kind of it. But other than that, like, yeah. fuck Brad. Fuck. Yeah, so later when the, the villain uh, who's uh, Ross Webster and his sister Vera and his, his girlfriend, Lorelai? Yeah, Lorelai. Or like his, I don't know, his hot assistant. Lorelai Ambrosia. Is that really her last name? Lorelai Ambrosia. Oof. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, it's a comic book movie, so I yeah. guess it's fine. I mean, I mean you you guess, Kevin. I, it's 1983. Ba- I Batman, know, Batman I with, with Michael Keaton hasn't even come out yet. I We're know. still six years away from that. I know. So it's like, what, 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 how do they know what to to actively um, this is one of the first mainstream like grab from movies. comics like how, what do they know what do they know to adapt versus what not to adapt? I, I guess, yeah. but whatever. Fuck it. We have so many other things to nitpick besides Lorelai Ambrosia's name. Yeah, so this is when the villain tells uh, Gus Gorman, because he's a computer genius, that you need to... you What you're going to do is you're going to hack into a satellite that can detect, like, weather storms and use it to create a weather storm, because that's how technology works. And, so he has to go into Smallville, where the computer is, to make the satellite cause a storm in Columbia because Columbia wouldn't deal with his company for some for for, co- for coffee. So for we're coffee. so 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 we're so his whole plan was to destroy the I guess the the plants in Columbia. So the places that he did have business with would kind of rise, and so his stock would go up. Like he's yeah. basically trying to make like a. A a uh, what I think it's like a scarce just a scarcity I think it's like a sp- particular word for it or it's like, oh an artificial scarcity by yeah. just using the weather machine to be like mer, mer, money 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 like yeah. tycoon bullshit yeah so Gus has to go to Smallville to do it and he tricks the bully who's apparently a security guard at that station yes with a bunch of alcohol and they get drunk together and then like prior I'm just figures out how to viciously drunk and yeah, prior figures out how to hack into the computer because it's a hilarious 80s how computer. did you know that he was an alcoholic was he banging on being an alcoholic i was wondering that too because at any point was richard prior meet brad before he goes to smallville or does he so. see him at like the does he see him at the he just gets off a bus and, like he's, and he's a smallville he there uh, yeah, so he cares. just so he banked on so he bank. Yeah, you're right. Who cares? Who gives cares. a sh- who gives a shit? So yeah, he gets him fucked up and then he does the. Um, it's like you need two keys to turn on the machine. So he yes. gets, he picks up like dr- Brad's drunk body and like puts like a little like weird like rope on him so that they both turn at the same time. They, so we, he, he weakened it, Bernie's him. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
that's that that's it. But then uh I don't know. What happens after that? Well after that I'm just looking at whose channel will win. I'm looking at my notes. Why wasn't he drunk? I think Superman like stops it and then that's when the villains are like, Well we gotta kill Superman, he's the problem. Because Superman stops the hurricane because he's Superman. Yeah, no. And he saves everybody. Yeah, no, automatically. Oh, yeah, and then, like, that's when Superman, like, Richard Pryor's excited that Superman stopped the hurricane. He's, like, trying, he's, like, going, he's going to he's his like fa- evil he's fanboy- boss. He's fanboying about Superman. Oh, man. And, another, and then another moment of just bad, like, just black characterization because the movie just has nothing else kind of, I was like, Superman's bad, man. Like, this and that. Like, Sarah, Sarah he was, like, a, like I said, if he was, like, tw- in his 20s, I could, I could, I could believe Richard Pryor saying these things. I could see it making more sense, but it just comes off as just yeah. them going for lowest common denominator. Like, we have to get... What do blacks like to hear? <laughs> he got in there, zing, zang, zoom. He took out the hurricane, he saved the people, and Spliff, all was well. Spliff, dip, I was like, excited and love it. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, boss, you don't like that because you didn't want that to happen? Oh, no, we don't like Superman. Superman's bad. Can I not bad. read the room? My bad. My bad, y'all. <laughs> I'm black. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so hype on this. And this is when he does the... the 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 ski is it the ski scene is that when he falls off the building too like yeah, when he's talking to him yeah he somehow is just talking there's about like a, there's like a um there's like a I don't even know how to describe it there's like a m- snowy mountaintop on the skyscraper yeah because using the weather because like rich. You, either rich or using the weather machine and it was never really described which one it is I, doesn't it's a, it's doesn't a matter book movie the villain has a fantastical base yes. I don't know. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Because the movie doesn't try to explain it, so why the fuck are we going to try to, like, well, maybe... Yeah, we... I, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> he's rich, and he's got crazy stuff, and he just wants money, and he's going to try to destroy the world over it, because he's evil. We did, yes, yes. And so Richard Pryor's, like, talking to him while on the skis, and that, this... And also, I thought this is when... Richard Pryor is going to have another introduction of Superman besides being a fanboy. I thought he was going to fall off the building and then there's a Superman just in the air. Yeah, yeah, I was waiting. I'm watching. Just, okay, this is the moment when this is make perfect sense. It's great, like, meeting and very like, hey, maybe Superman's not so bad. He saved me, but, but just yeah. for the whole plot. And then just, nope, just another slapstick. Because yeah, everyone knows that if, you, if you're wearing skis, you can fall from any height. Yep, that's the rule. Mm-hmm. And if you fall, fall, you can fall from any height as long as you're as slant. That yeah. that that's the other main right, rule. It's right. like skis and yeah. slant. Sure. Gravity does not matter. I almost broke my ankles. There. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Nice. Listen, yeah, can yeah. relax, no, Kevin. Come figure it out. Figure yeah. it out. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> All right. So while at the same time Clark's enjoying being at Smallville, he's hitting it off with Lana, you know, and she's got a kid and he don't care. It's uh, little Ricky and their dog. So they're having a picnic in a in a field and while they're eating together like well where's Ricky he needs to come back for lunch he's not coming and super and Clark Kent uses x-ray vision to see that Ricky's in the line of a tractor so he's got to fly and save Ricky and he saves him and then he stops the tractor from running him over and this Wait. kid this poor kid who's running the tractor it's like oh my god I almost just killed that little boy yeah because no, he has a concussion I guess well because cause, well because well I think you had skipped over because the way you had sounded it sounded like just the dog was in the field the boy went after the dog in, in and the he field, like tripped and, and fell and hit his yeah. head yeah oh, and, and rock, the dog's oh, like yeah, barking and the, and, the, and the movie yeah hey, that's you see really, blood on the rock in that's, his head that's right yeah. god damn Jesus Christ movie <laughs> just yeah. like I have all the things to like not hold back on like those kids we're, we're going to hit the, the clunk <laughs> we're yeah. going to show the impact of him falling on the ground. Yeah, so he saves little Ricky, and then he little, sees Lana. Little, little Ricky. And he sees, La- <laughs> sees Lana, and it's like, oh, thank you, Superman. Hey, Clark. Clark, Superman's here. Come see him. And then Superman, of course, runs away real quick, and then Clark comes out of, like, a sewage drain with the dog being like, I found the dog. Gee whiz. What? It's like, you missed Superman. He's like, Superman was here. Golly. And also, while he was changing into Superman, this movie doesn't even give a shit about where he's changing into Superman, because, like, Clark is just in between. He cha- He's running t- to get to, to the actual, like, m- like field where the, where the tiller is, and it's just he's running very fast and he's just in between these like fence posts with spaces in between them and that's how he changes Superman he's just running and then he's in his Clark Kent suit and then he's Superman all I'm waiting for is the camera to pan just a little further act being like did you just see that? <laughs> like wasn't that Paul Kent wasn't that wasn't that the Kent's boy? he knew we were right here right? there's a bunch of weird transitions he, like, he, first, he knew we're we're not dumb <laughs> he, he changes into Superman very weirdly in like a lot of these movies like sometimes it just like disappears and he's in a Superman costume like, I, like, and, I like think it fades like it, it his, fades off. Like, it fades away. Like his clothes dissolve, or just like they're not there anymore. They're just not there. It just fades into he's Superman. What? His first um, dressing as Superman in the first Superman movie is he goes into a revolving door and he changes real quick, and then like a black eye goes, oh, 
Oh, you look fly now. And he flies off. He's like, damn. I'm not kidding. That's the that's in the first Superman movie. That's what happens. That's amazing. When the first Superman movie was 1978. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> damn. That's pretty. That, that's the first the first time you see Superman in the first Superman movie. That's that's what it is. Phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal. But yeah, so you know, another another moment of Superman doing Superman things, just great saving. Woo! Yeah. So Ross is trying to figure out how to kill Superman, and they find out about Kryptonite, and so he tells Gus, "You need to make Kryptonite because computers can just 3D print things. If you just have the elements, you can just tell it what you want." I forget how he gets it. So neither do so I. So he figures out the chemical components of Kryptonite, but there's like one part of the elements missing, and he's not sure what to do. So he just picks tar because it's an unknown element. Mm. He's like, "All right, tar." So he just so that's they, a good filler. Yeah, I'm a computer genius. He's looking at and cigarettes and he's like, "Tar, okay, I'll replace that like point like five percent or whatever it is with tar." Mm-hmm. I don't know. Cigarettes are bad. <sighs> yeah, I guess that's the message. Maybe I, I don't know because the movie's just. I feel like most of the movie is trying to pander hard as hell for you know Superman fans and yeah. for just I don't know just comic books and just every and in a Richard Parr's characterization. Just every every decision is just surface level that's what come, it comes across as just okay we're going to solve this quick problem of like how do we um, just uh, engender ourselves to this demographic let's just okay quick, we're going to say yeah. the boogie boogie okay great we did that now we're going to have like a crazy tycoon villain cool we got Superman fans checked off we're yeah. going to have the cool powers but the, the plot takes so long to get to anything really important because yeah. even we're this probably like 30-40 minutes in and yeah, like nothing really of consequence is happening to well, Superman well the part where this well we've, we've kind of like skipped a, a, a ahead a little bit because I kind of made a note of when the when he starts doing the kryptonite the kryptonite stuff we're like 53 minutes really? 53 minutes like that that that's when it started like 50 and that's like actually a little bit before that because I'm I'm saying I may know of that really nothing has happened in the 53 minutes we're probably close to an hour mark when we're starting to get to the conflict of like how is her men going to actually spend split or get weakened or whatever like the the villains are starting to move right now like it's it took yeah. too long to get to this point way too long and Superman still doesn't have like any interaction with the villains yet either no or really barely Richard Pryor's character because yeah. what's because has he met Superman yet in person or is he just, just or is he no just that Superman, hasn't happened yet or yeah okay so he's just a Superman fanboy that's it he's just a I don't know Richard Pryor's weird in this movie yeah I don't know. yeah five million dollars yeah, so, yeah. so so because Su- uh, Superman saves Ricky uh, while Clark Kent's in uh, Metropolis gets a call uh, being like be, from Lana saying how oh Ricky uh, Ricky told all the kids how he got saved by Superman and they didn't believe him so then he got really so he got really crazy and told the kids that Superman was going to be his birthday party like is there anything you could do Clark I know you know Superman he's like well I think He's like, well, Lana, you tell Ricky Superman will be at his birthday party on Wednesday. She's like, oh, golly, Clark, La- isn't that swell? Lana, listen, I really want to smash. So I, I guarantee <laughs> you can you can bet my bottom dollar that Superman will be at this birthday party. Oh, Clark, you will smash. But why did you just teach bad behavior to your kid? Terrible. Actually the worst. Lana's not a good mom. Terrible. <laughs> That's not the your kid shouldn't be rewarded for for lying like this. Yeah, no, like it's it really just set a terrible precedent. I'm actually surprised that the more you, when you said that, why was Clark so down to just be like, you know what? Yeah, you, you just said why? <laughs> yeah, pussy, pussy, pussy. He, he already got Lois in the second one and was sort of like a they they slept together in the second one. I mean, I I know, but I then know. they but then they stopped being a thing. So exactly got that new girl. I I guess I should say and by I, new girl I mean old high school girl. I guess I should say because you are right. Did see the reason why he's trying to have sex but why are they characterizing Clark I just why is the movie trying to characterize Clark like this like it's just do you know his character at all like he's he's barely with he doesn't have anything to do in this movie All right, you're right we gotta give him some sort of a conflict he's got nothing to do so he he goes to Smallville for like dinner and to be at the party then of course then Smallville all Smallville finds out Superman's gonna be there so they're like a big parade for him and like Everything's fun, and they're like, thank you, Superman, for saving little Ricky and visiting our small town. I'm the mayor. <laughs> and it's like, thanks. I love you, Kansas. I'm happy to be here, and thank you so much for all this. And then this is when Richard Pryor shows up as, like, a military general with Vera, who's one yeah, of the evil ladies. And he's doing, like, a general patent in person. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like a gigantic Which, general patent in person. Yeah. Talking, he gives this huge speech that's supposed to be funny, but it's a like, very I, dated. Do you remember what it is? I don't even remember. We're, we're just here to just celebrate, like, how Superman is just 
is so amazing and this and that. Like, he's just trying to show, like, the military might in America and, like, yeah. USA. Because he like, has the kryptonite now. Yes. And I think that's what he was give, He was giving it as, like, a medal of, like, here's yeah. a here's how, which is another thing. It's like, what? What? Here's, as, as, a, as an what? appreciation, instead of giving you a medal or a trophy or, like, you know, like, some sort of decorative necklace. I don't know. Anything. A belt, a sash, <laughs> uh, a, a trophy. <laughs> Give uh, me a statue that's being made in my honor in the know. square. Something, I, <laughs> no, here's this weird... Uh, space rock. Space rock. Damn it, Marie. They're minerals. <laughs> but also, this is Superman 3. Superman 1, he came into contact with Kryptonite. And I think he does in Superman 2 as well. Maybe he doesn't come into contact with Kryptonite in Superman 2. Doesn't matter. But looking at this rock, it looks a lot like Kryptonite. I'm sorry, Superman. I know you're vulnerable to most things. But I think if you ever see like a shiny like neon green rock, you should always be like, wait a minute. Not even... Hey, listen, Kev. Not even rock. Substance. Let's like break it down even more. We usually like a shiny green glint Superman in the corner of your fucking crazy peripheral vision... Because yeah. you're because you're a god. Yeah, you can see through space. Pause. Mm-hmm. How about you pause? How about you pause? And be like, hey, how about I appreciate the gesture? And I know the I know the movie's trying to be like, well, look at Superman being so. And even he's skeptical. skeptical. His face is like, yeah. Thank and it's like, you? should I should I accept this? But I'm like all for truth, justice in the American way. I can't I can't say I no. I can't say no to a gift. <laughs> <laughs> that would be improper. <laughs> like I just it's cr- super. I want he's so wholesome. I, I want I wanted a kid in the crowd. Like, Superman, no! <laughs> Please! Even I know what kryptonite is, and that looks like it. Even if it doesn't feel like it, maybe it's another strain. And then the mom's like, Billy, 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 please, please, please. This is the biggest day in our town. <laughs> Superman is here. Superman doesn't have time to hear you. The mayor is going to get reelected because of this day. <laughs> Political moves. Mm-hmm. Diabolical. Super, the mayor is going to talk about this shit until until he gets... He's going to get reelected until he... He's going to die in office because of, of this one Superman visit. I guarantee fucking to you. Mayor Johnson. He increased property taxes, but he did get Superman here one time. Embezzled millions of dollars. But he did get Superman here that one time. <laughs> That was pretty sweet. I would forgive... The populace would forgive so much if you got to get pictures of Superman on your wall. It's like, huh, I lost my house in the bank. <laughs> you just look at your Here's wall. Here's a picture of me shaking hands with Superman. He, he, he took me to the Grand Canyon that day. It took five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, seemingly, nothing happens to Superman. He just takes the rock. He's like, whatever. And then Gus and Vera are kind of like, oh, oh no, may, no. Maybe that was why like it wasn't like a big deal because maybe the, the kryptonite case opened but even then I, I well, does, he, well, it would have started hurting him immediately. Immediately, immediately like as soon as he's near it typically especially yeah. in this version like as soon as he's like a few feet he starts getting like woozy okay cool 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 so maybe so, that's why he's like okay cool this looks like kryptonite but I'm not dying so yeah so cool. he takes it touches it and everything seems fine and then after the ceremony, he goes back to, to Lana's house for, like, dinner. Mm-hmm. And then Lana gets a phone call being like, oh, no, there's a there's a crash over at the bridge, and the truck's hanging off. It's about to fall off. you got to help it. And he's just like, okay. Oh, wait. No, he's like, she, he's, super, he's like, oh, she opens the door. He's like, sorry, you, you got to go. And he's like, what do you mean? What's the rush? I just got here, babe. <laughs> what are you talking about, girl? What's going on? What's a fine girl like you doing in a town like this? He gets real creepy and close to her. And By like, yourself. There's even an awkward silence in the movie of her just sitting there like uncomfortably while he's like lingering over and it's just like, uh... Is, Superman. Uh, <laughs> people are dying. Or people, maybe he's dying. He's like, don't worry. I always get there on time. And then finally, it's, I forget what it is. Like He snaps out of it for like a second. He's like, yeah, right. I should go. Mm. And he's like, what the hell? Like, Why am I acting this way? Whatever. So he flies off and of course... He doesn't get there in time. And he's like, what happened? They already crashed? And then, like, the one fireman's like, if only you got in here a few seconds sooner. Thanks, asshole. <laughs> and then he kind of, like, looks. He's just kind of like, girl, like, what? Damn my Man. penis. Damn you, boner. Yeah, so then the, so then he's, the next thing he does, he, he unleans the Leaning Tower of Pisa. In rage. <laughs> yeah, just that's his idea of evil. <laughs> I'm so tough, guys. I just made this monument. And then the other, <laughs> that is memorable. And then, so, so Superman's kind of evil now. And, like, the next evil thing he does that I love is that he goes to the Olympics. And, like, right when the guy with the Olympic torch is about to light the, the, light the big fire, and Superman just blows it out. <laughs> As he's about, he's not even, like, he's just about yeah, to light it. He's, yeah, he's oh. right there. And Superman just goes, like, a little, <laughs> cucks him. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and the guy, that's uh, probably one of the few times I laughed in the movie because the look of disappointment on the man's face, he just like has to just, 
just walk down the steps because <laughs> like, yeah. I can't because I, I guess I can't I can't light it but that was a just petty bullshit f- yeah it's hilarious five seconds of levity does not make a almost two hour movie was the movie two hours I, yes I, it is it was, it was two hours yes yeah, <sighs> this movie did not need to be two hours long nope 30 minutes of Kansas could have been cut out like Smallville did not need to be as like detailed as the it whole is the intro of this movie could have been cut out yeah oh, that weird slapstick and the blind man falling and then like the yeah someone stepping on a construction guy's head and I don't know yeah, don't all know. kind of trash. So Ross is mad that Superman's not dead, but then Gus kind of informs him, like, well, he's not doing heroic stuff anymore. And they're like, good enough for me. If he's not being a hero, then he's not going to get away what we're trying to do. So like, now I'm going to cause an oil embargo. So he tells Gus to basically... Real tycoon shit. To tell all these ships to go to the middle of the ocean and just sit there and do nothing. Oh, yeah. oh he makes the computer tell, like, all the people responsible yeah. for the tankers. Yeah. And, like, just, and, and they all, all go like, there but one what, ship. Well, yeah, one guy's like, I don't give a fuck what that computer says to me. Like, I have a route. And he's right. Mm-hmm. Which, why aren't all these ship captains smart enough to know? Because I thought that he was using the computers to actually physically make mm-hmm. them go. Mm-hmm. But he's just giving them instructions to go there. Mm-hmm. Why are you listening to this? Why aren't you calling boss and be like, hey, I got this alert. Is this you? And they're like, nope, that's not us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, you know, because the, the transportation of oil will impact the world economy. So I just want to make sure this is okay. You know, I'm a ship captain. Should I go to the I'm middle? Literally, I'm literally my only my only purpose is to make sure the oil gets from point to point B, and I'm no, not drunk. No, so <laughs> no check. Yeah. I'm not drunk, so it's pretty good for us. <laughs> I'm not an old timey ship captain. I'm a I'm a legitimate ship captain. Damn it. Yeah, no. Because he's right. He's like, why would I go there to Middleware just to await further instruction? That's stupid. Chug along, and everyone on the ship is like, you're right. Aye, aye, bye. It's <laughs> the most logical things in this whole movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> really, really. Why would I go there? Why would I do that? Uh, uh, stupid, stupid. And then so, super, and then Superman is also being evil and rapey, and we're just Superman's horny in this movie because it, he the 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 He's like a looming presence of sexual because the Lorelai because the Lorelai Ambrosia chick she strands herself on like the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, because so so his. Ross, the villain, his his sexy sidekick, uh, Lorelai, who's kind of like a ditzy blonde, but like secretly is like a genius philosopher. Yeah, there's a scene. There's one scene when they're all the bad guys are out of the room except for Lorelai, and she's like, you know, doing a, like a kind of like a regular. She's reading just a book, and you can't really see the title except that it says Kant on on, on the front. And that's like a like a really prominent philosopher, and she's like, hmm. And she's like, does a bunch of philosophy jargon, and then you hear she hears the 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 bad guy's coming into the room. Oh, it's like, <laughs> Poopsie Doodle. <laughs> she just throws the book. <laughs> oh, hey, Poopsies. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I liked her, though. I know. She, really good. she no. kind of reminded me a little bit of like a pre-Harley Quinn. Oh, yeah. No, that that, that is fair. I, honestly, the fact that I didn't know that, I, I didn't f- really focus on who the other girl was in relation to it's him. His sister. I thought I, it made more sense why she wasn't as sexy as the as the girl. I was like, this That's is like a other... weird joke too. Where like when Lois Lane gets a picture of her because they they there's an exposition dump in the beginning of the movie with Lois and Jimmy explaining who Ross Webster is and who his girlfriend is and who the sister is. And Perry makes a of like the picture of the sister. Why is it fuzzy? And they're like, that's just what she looks like, Chief. And he's like, oh dear, <laughs> she's ugly. <laughs> 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 we judge women based on what it does to like you know <laughs> how the blood. It's pumping. That's it. Not the fact that she's the one controlling most of the business. Like, yeah. she, like, she's the one giving the ideas. I mean, we could do this. No, no, no. Now we do this this time. Pretty and, much. And Ross is just like, yes, great. But I'll pay you. But she's also just trying to appease Ross. At the same time. Yeah, like her, yeah. her and the sexy sidekick are kind of in competition for Ross's approval. Which is why maybe I thought they were both. I thought Ross was fucking both of them because no. I was like, why does this woman care so much about what her brother thinks of her if she's also in the business like I, you know what I mean like it just the know. characterization was just trash <laughs> like all, all through I don't why know why couldn't we have Brainiac Brainiac exists at this point in time why do you even have Ross Webster in freaking why do we need another Lex Luthor and if not just have Lex Luthor yeah. again they just or a, a shittier version of Lex Luthor yeah Pretty much. Well, Gene Hackman didn't want to do this one because he knew it was crap. Everyone knew it. Didn't you, you said everyone, everyone, knew every, it everyone knew it was crap. Christopher Reeve, like, he knew it was crap and was like, I'm not doing this unless I get final script approval. And then, like, he had, like, a bunch of crazy stipulations for the fourth one because he just knew how bad the third one was. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of behind-scenes drama with the Superman movies. Like I said, they fired Richard Donner doing the second one and replaced him with Richard Lester. 
I mean, with all this, um, I mean, all this money involved and the character and how people feel. And I think like some producers get like really attached to what they want to have in certain movies. Yeah. Just movies in general that does happen. But Superman, I think, is so much power, always. so much power attached to like the character. So people get butt hurt real hard about this he's shit. He's so old that so many different people of generations have a different idea of what Superman is because he's been different because yeah. of how old Superman is. So it becomes this whole like competition. No. I almost I don't want to say competition, but it almost feels that way. It's a competition of how are we going to portray Superman. He's, he, over, he's he, over eighty years old. Damn. So because his character came in nineteen thirty, <sighs> what like eight was it? Was it nineteen thirty eight? I don't know. I'll get into it later. It I were, forget what it is now. But honestly, it's, God, it's but the mid to late thirties, like thirty six. But in less than twenty years, Superman will be a hundred year old character. Like Man. that's that's the wild thing. So the fact that there's so much like, mm. I guess drama with this, I'm not surprised because there's just so much time yeah. <laughs> to just be like, no, I want this, I want that. Tick 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 tick. Yeah, so so because of the one oil, the one um, tanker isn't going where it needs to go. They have the idea to have the sexy psychic try to seduce Superman, so she hangs out on top of the, what the Statue, Statue of Liberty. Liberty. Statue of Liberty, and he, she's like, I guess the words like they think she's gonna jump, and Superman shows up because she's like posed all sexily, like mm-hmm. in this outfit, being like, "Oh man, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna jump. I'm in so much hot, sexy danger." And Superman shows up. She's like, "I hope you're not here to save me. I'm beyond saving." Superman's like, "I don't do that sort of thing anymore. I'm in hot." I'm in hot, sexy danger. Help me, Superman. Help me, help me, help me. If you want something, Superman, maybe you can do me a favor. And he's like, what do you want, girl? And it's like, well, there's this one ship that ain't going where it should go. Can you do something about it for me? He's like, yeah, sure. So he goes to that one ship that's not cooperating with the weird embargo. And he basically causes an oil spill. No, he causes an oil spill. Yeah, yeah, no, and this is probably the most legitimately evil thing he does. Yeah, it's besides a, all, I mean, it got. I remember. I, I just remember when it happened. I was like, oh, good, something finally fucking happened. <laughs> yeah, so he causes an oil spill and he just leaves. Because I mean, even though it doesn't go where it needs to go, it's it's not. Well, no, it's yeah, it's not going to Metropolis where it's supposed to be. So it did, fine, it did good his enough. job, perfect. And Superman goes back to her, and I think he sleeps with her. It's implied because it, it, they kiss and it fades to black. So that means they, I, I, I think that's movie logic for they slept together. Superman, smash <laughs> away! <laughs> it's like, what's that? It's a bird. It's a plane. Superman, it's Superman leaving another wow. one night stand. Wow, Superman, really faster than a speeding bullet. I'm sorry, you're just so beautiful. <laughs> I didn't want to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I had to be quick, otherwise, what? I can't keep burying bodies in the in, in, in the Pacific. <laughs> He's evil Superman, so he could be doing that. He really could. He really, really could. Because I don't think, because uh, he, what, what's like the thing that eventually makes him like fight the evil part of it? Like what? Ha- okay. Yeah, like, so before he bef- gets to that, yeah. Um, Gus starts questioning Ross, being like, "You guys are getting rich from all this stuff, and you're doing criminal stuff, and you got you're used blackmailing me for the criminal stuff I did, but like you're doing way worse stuff. So I want something in return. Like you guys are making money, let me get something. They're kind of just like, well, what do you want? He's like, I want this, and he. He gives them these weird blueprints that are like written on like candy wrappers and like cigarette packs. And oh like, yeah, it's a Napkin, super computer. It can do anything. They're like, what do you mean anything? It's like it can do anything. It can do literally anything. And Ross is like, well, why would I want that? He's like, well, because if you tell me anything, I'll tell it anything. So you can do anything. He's like, so then that means that I can do anything. Yes, we'll build your computer, Gus. Yes. <laughs> 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 All right. So now this is when Superman is in a bar getting drunk, pouring himself shots. You maybe you've seen like little gifts of him just pouring himself. shots. Shots. He's drinking. He's got like the five o'clock shadow, Br- like, and he's yeah, just bristly. He, he's just he's so ragged, and he's oh my god. So he's, he, he's ready. He's almost like he's ready he, to fight someone. Yeah. He's, like, he's looking for trouble. Oh yeah, he, he pulls he pours out like a thing of peanuts at the bar and starts flicking them at the at the um, bottles, and they're that, shattering. That's what it was. He's flicking yeah. the peanuts, and then he even does one, this invasion to warp the mirror behind the bar too. What an asshole! And he's flicking them, and then that's when Lana and Ricky go to Metropolis to see what's going on. And Superman just stumbles out drunk, being like, what are you looking at? Huh? What are you looking at? And little Ricky's just like, no, Superman, this isn't you. You're just going through a funk. And Lana's like, he can't hear you, Ricky. Leave him alone. And he's like, he can hear me. He's got super hearing. And that's when he's like, believe in yourself, Superman. You're good. And that's when he starts having like the internal struggle of like, who am I? Ricky, ah. Ricky looks to his mom and like, if you had just had sex with a mom, none of this would have been happening. Why don't you put out? This is why I don't have a new dad. You've never put out. This is why I don't have any brothers or sisters. <laughs> I'm so lonely. <laughs> so the 
this is when Superman in all this Christopher Reeve Superman glory where something happens where it's just like, you got to just accept it because this version of Superman has like no rules. Nope. Anything can kind of happen. <laughs> Fuck it. The last, you know, he's turned back time by just going around the world. He's rebuilt the wall of China. So now he's two people. It's evil Superman with his five o'clock shadow and Clark Kent. And they're in a junkyard. And they're gonna fight. Yeah, really I, slow and boring. Yeah, but it's still kind of interesting just hearing when like was Clark Kent super in in I don't in, know. in that or was Superman depowered because of the know. split? Okay, cool. I don't just know. Making sure. No one knows. Sure. Okay, great. What is the symbolism of it? What does it mean? Right. I don't know. It's the duality of being. It's when Luke saw Vader in the cave in Empire Strikes Back, or when Superman was red and also Superman blue. No, I don't think so. Because mm-hmm. they're both good, aren't they? Um, I always I don't remember that. Exactly. <laughs> I, never read, I know what it is. <laughs> I've never read the red and blue Superman with like electric or something. I, I or, feel like I, I'm always, in my head, my, my head can was always like, someone of them went evil eventually. It's I the I, 90s. I don't know. <laughs> if, ex, to my point. If some, the if 90s, if one, that's, if, that's a 90s Superman. If one of them didn't go evil in the 90s comic, I'd be very surprised. I'd be very oh, surprised. No, Here nor there. But they go and like, use a very boring, But slow, I'll get the movie points for this by what? having him fight evil each other like it looks convincing like it does. you have two Christopher Reeves in the same scene like close together fighting and it looks convincing like the green screen's not bad like this is one of the few moments where the special effects are pretty good yeah and then the really it's this movie it get because people will say like well it came in 1983 and whatever the fuck like maybe the special effects maybe they're maybe we can give like the past and it's like fuck that no because yeah. this is because the same year what was it Return of the Jedi came out like a few weeks before this yeah yeah, so, Star Wars. Yeah. So, the Star Wars, the original Star Wars trilogy, basically is a similar timeline of the Superman movies, because the first Star Wars came out in 77, and Star- the first Superman came out in 78, and then the second Superman came out in 1980, and that's when Empire Strikes Back came out, then 83, Jedi, and 3, Superman. Fair enough. So, yeah. just, like, always just, like, this kind of neck and... Not even, like... I, get, I mean, it's competition. It's like, all right, here, yeah. here it is. Like, we're going to split, like, the nerd audience. Like, who cares more about what? I mean, this movie did make money, though. But it was just... Every, all the critics were like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what, what, have, what have we been subjected to right now? Yeah, it's, like, the most boring fight that I can't look away from. So there's something about it. I don't know what it is, but there's just something about it. I do like how the fight ends, where, like, Clark can't just kind of just starts... Just chokes out. Like, he literally... And I, it just, like, grabs... Evil Superman's neck with two of his hands and just slow, strangles slowly strangles. Might have been Man of Steel when he kills Oz. He just kind of just has his arms just locked away. He's just like, just go to sleep. Just go to sleep. And then Evil Superman just fades away. He just vanishes. And, and he's just, I, I always assumed he just put back right into Clark. I don't know. Or his essence, the essence has been purified and now we're... There are no rules in the Superman movies. All is canon. All is law. <laughs> Every Superman's comic book. Powers. Yeah, I mean, there was one comic book where he shot little miniature Supermans all from his hands. Like, and those miniature Supermans have the same powers as Superman, which means that they can shoot even miniature Supermans, and then those Supermans can shoot even miniature Supermans. Until you're just breathing Superman. Yeah. You're just every, everything is Superman. We're all drowning in microcosmic Superman. Maybe it's been that way since since, since forever. <laughs> Who knows? In this movie, it's possible. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> this movie's weird. So then he starts undoing all the wrong things he did. He fixes the oil spill... By like putting the oil back, he, I don't know, he just fixes all his wrongdoings pretty much. Yeah, and he, I don't, know, I don't even know. How does he fight the villain? Oh, oh, oh! I think he figures out what the villains are doing somehow. Do you remember how he figures it out? Split. Because he doesn't have a lot of interaction with the villains, so like to him to even know what's going on. Gus takes way too. Yeah, no, hold on. I have the. I can. This will be a little edit. Like, how does he even get into? I don't remember. Hold on. Like, do they goad him to going there so they can kill him? Or are they doing something else with the supercomputer? Because now they say they have the supercomputer. It's built in the Grand Canyon. Yeah. And so so, so once he gets his shit back, he goes Superman. He starts repairing all the damage mm-hmm. uh, that, that, that he's been doing to, like, yeah. the world. Um, and then he defends himself from rockets. Like someone, like some, someone shoots something but, at him. But like, like how does he even know that what Gus and Ross are doing? He I just says it, it confronts them. Like confronts Ross, Vera, Whatever. and maybe may, may, may because, may because he knew that the Kryptonite was coming from them. Like I don't remember either how he just. It just I just remember him being at the base, being like, "Haha, it's time for me to stop you because I'm motherfucking Superman <laughs> and I'm not evil anymore." <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know. And so, like, they're shooting rockets at him in, like, video game style. Mm-hmm. And he's, like, the, the, specs, the effects aren't good, but they're not, like, terrible. horrendous. They're, they're, they're passable. Whatever. For the time. And you don't yeah. care anymore. No. 
If anything, the miniatures of seeing rockets being shot looks worse than when he's actually being shot with rockets. Yeah. Whatever. It's Superman 3. And he gets to the room with all the computer stuff. And that's when he's like, I'm here to stop the four of you. And Gus is like, the four of us? What? You're saying I'm the villain? It's like, yeah, you idiot. You've been with the villains the whole time. Do you not? Like, have you? Have we been in a different have you, movie? Have you not been paying attention to the movie you're in? I don't understand. Every step of the way you've been doing, like, horrific, like, villainish, like, usually self, more selfish type things. But, like, you've actively caused a weather phenomenon to drown people. People probably died in the storm we made. Like, what are you talking about? Yes, we 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 are the bad guys. We are going to kill Superman now because we are the bad guys. <laughs> so they trap Superman in a bubble? Was, like, he just bubbled, was it kryptonite energy? Like, was it like it was that? Bubble. Was Was that just like... I don't know. I couldn't tell if it was just... It was green bubble. It was a it green... It was like they shot light. silly string at him and then he's in a bubble and they're like, yes, we got him. He'll die in that bubble. And then he gets out of the bubble... And then they shoot him with a beam of kryptonite. It's like, we got it right this time. We know what the elements are for some reason. And then that's so, when so Gus there, has so, the change so, of heart. Um, oh, that's why I was confused. There was a separate bubble from the kryptonite beam. You don't remember the bubble? No, I remember the fucking that's bubble. Like the first tries, all right, the rockets didn't work. We'll put him in a bubble. And they put him in a bubble, and he's like struggling to get out of it. And then God, he gets out of it. shut up, movie. <laughs> shut up. Why did you think a giant bubble would stop him? <laughs> shut up. That's why. <laughs> Here's my money. Richard Pryor, stop asking questions. Here's $5.1 million. Yeah, so Richard Pryor has the change of heart and shuts out the power of the computer to try to save Superman. And then the computer becomes sentient and powers itself and then starts going crazy. And I don't know. And then he has to basically get an axe and start, like, beating the shit out of, like, the, 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 the beam that's that's causing Superman to, like... Be, get hurt. Yeah, and then she defends he, itself. Yeah, so Richard Pryor has to get like some type of. Pay, I think it's a, it's a fire axe. I don't know where the fuck he gets it from. He has an axe in his hand. He's like, oh, I got, yeah. I can't do it by myself. Superman, help, 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 help. And then he's like, thank you. And the machine defends itself, kind of shoots him off. Mm-hmm. And then the machine's like, it's going haywire. So they, all the villains try to run away, but then Vera gets sucked into it in a horrific fashion of like the machine just becomes a part of her and it's terrifying. That's one of the, that's one of those things as a kid that freaked me out. Like, oh really? So it's like you know how like there's like that weird horrific things you see as a kid and it kind of scars you forever. Oh yeah, I got a bunch of those. That's one of mine for me. Not seeing fair. her just get like absorbed by this machine, you know. <laughs> one of one. It's of up the... there with with Danny DeVito the penguin biting that dude's nose. Mm-hmm. Like it's up there, man. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think off the top of my head like ones that, like would always freak me out. Oh, the one that kind of scarred me as a kid that was kind of like funny in hindsight was Pee Wee's Big Adventure when he's in um, the the truck. And large, large Marge? Large Marge. I forget. I think it's Large Marge. Whatever the fuck that yeah, one's name was. Weird and she like yeah. turns because the movie was not that and then it was. I'll never forget. I was over at my aunt's. I was maybe like, I forget how young I was, but enough to be like, ah, Scar! Cool! <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> it's here forever! So then this is when Superman, every time Superman tries to throw anything at it, the computer just adapts. It can adapt to anything. And that's when he realizes the acid. I'll go get that acid that I had in Kansas. Let me fly to Kansas, get that acid. And then because, Plot device. And because it's not hot, the computer doesn't recognize it as a threat. But he puts it in the computer and then it gets hot and then it destroys the computer. We so, did. Woo! So then Superman... I guess saves Gus and flies off with him, and Gus is like, "Oh no! Like I can't fly. Man's not meant to fly. Whoa! Watch out for those trees. Oh! Uh, like we shouldn't be doing this, soups." Yeah. So then he just Please. drops off Richard Pryor at like a coal mine somewhere, and then that's like Richard Pryor. Look, 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 Gus. The men are black like you. You'll fit in just fine. I'm running away. Uh, <laughs> maybe he's still trying to get good. He's probably still got that little evil in him, trying to shake off. That's what Gus saying. Like that was weird, but. Man, Superman's had a long day. He did save my life. If he wants to say some weird offerings is coming, I'll give it to him. It's fine. Everyone gets one. <laughs> Everyone gets one. <laughs> he did he, save my life, and I did try to kill him, so... We're, we're split. We're whatever. good. Fuck okay. it. Okay. And so, is that, that is the last time we see Richard Pryor? I think so. Damn. So now it's... He he, he grabs... Oh, while he's at the coal mine, he grabs his coal, squeezes it, makes a diamond, and then he goes to Lana and Ricky and is like, sorry, but Superman can't meet you for dinner because apparently he was supposed to meet you guys for dinner. And Ricky's like, oh, man, no, Superman. And Clark gives Lana the ring and 
is he proposing to her or is he just giving her the ring? Because yeah. I can't tell. The yeah. movie like makes a joke like, oh, he's not. But like they, but the, but they also treat it like he is. Yeah, way, way later. I on. couldn't figure out if they were getting married, if they were getting married or not, just based on what it was. Yeah, I mean, it was just like a really weird, like here's this, di- here's this <laughs> crazy expensive diamond as just a gift of friendship. Yeah, like, and for some reason, the bully shows up to try to get Lana and sees him on his knee giving it to her, and he's just like, "What? You can't? Impossible!" And then it's more slapstick. He like falls out of the room and like onto like a. I don't know. Falls into a coma. Like Slaps I- him <laughs> dumb stuff. I yeah. don't know. This is a Superman movie. Why is it so silly? It doesn't matter. He's going to be dead at 50. He's an alcoholic. And then we get back to Lana is going to work at the Daily Planet because I guess she's marrying Clark. And then Lois is tan from her vacation. And then the movie kind of ends. But nope, we got to go back to that Leaning Tower pizza and lean it again. And of course, the guy who's the the uh, little shopkeeper has this, the right towers now, right way up. And when he fixes it, he smashes them again. That poor man. Yeah, he probably spent like his life savings just trying to like get the new figurines. He's like, okay, okay, Giuseppe, you got to lean on, <laughs> you got to lean on the house. The pizza place cannot ha- miss one order. But God, this cart is your dream, and you did it. He oh. puts it back, mamma mia. Oh Lordy, I'm going to have to stop. Ah, it. he does that little like chin thing. Yeah, like, little, like screw you, oh, Italian. No. Some of my favorite, like, unused gestures. Bleh. Yeah, because it's just like the little, like, flick up, the up, the, the upward flick of the, of the, uh, the, yeah. from the neck, neck to your chin flick. Ah, uh, even more, even better than the middle finger, because the middle finger is so aggressive. But you do that, it's almost like, Bleh. it's almost silly enough. People are like, ah, oh, whatever. <laughs> Hand to the chin flick. Mm-hmm. And then that movie ends with Superman is, a. Uh, Fly, the, you, they reused the same ending shot from the first movie of him Lazy. flying in space. Of him flying in space and smiling, and then that's how the movie ends. Uh, but one thing I thought was kind of funny, like it's not like a fan theory, it's a little joke that I had that I thought was kind of funny, is when Ricky thinks Superman's coming for dinner, but it's just Clark, and then he gives Lana the ring. I just think him being like, oh, gee whiz, not only am I not having dinner with Superman, but boring old Clark Kent's going to bang my mom. <laughs> You pick him, Mom. At least Brad's funny. I know he drinks a lot, but he may... <laughs> he helps you play video games. Wait, it's 1983. There's no... There's not even any video games yet. I mean, there's Atari. Is there Atari? There is. I can't... 1983? There should be something. There should be something. Yeah, any, there's any, something. Anything. Yeah. He wants me to play the violent video games, Mom. <laughs> Whatever. You should go outside and play more. Yeah. Ricky. Being rewarded, Ricky. being rewarded for... <laughs> being, rewarded. <laughs> <laughs> being rewarded for all the wrong things. Yeah, so that's Superman 3. It's uh, it's not very good. Not good at all. Uh, I like the first Superman movie, and the second one's pretty good, too, but I would say stop there. Yeah. I still haven't seen the fourth one. Maybe I'll watch it one day. I probably won't after watching Superman 3. And if it's worse... It's worse. If it's worse than this one, I... Unless is Hey, Kevin, is there a black and white protagonist in Superman 4? Nope. Well, great. <laughs> nope. This is the only time I think a Superman movie has a black person in a prominent role. Well, I mean, Man of Steel, Perry White is, mm-hmm. uh, is Lawrence Fishburne. Oh, yeah. I always forget that. And... Superman Returns, I mean, no, I think the only person of color in Superman Returns is that Cal Penn is one of Lex Luthor's henchmen. Oh, yeah. I forgot that he was in that movie. I'm just, I'm saying that. It's yeah. like, oh, shit. Hey, Cal. <laughs> yeah. he, he barely has, I don't think he has any lines. He's just in it. I don't know. Yeah, no, this movie as a whole just showed all of the, the worst parts about, I don't know, just being paid for something as opposed to doing something for the passion which or even having would... an organic story just by being like if we put Richard Pryor in it it'll be Richard, Richard Pryor in this it'll be good why would that how will this add he's famous to... and people like him and he's funny but like we're making a comic book movie I mean sure it can be a little silly it can be light hearted but how is just... this really adding to the like, product the movie opens by being like this is a comedy because you see all that weird slapstick mm-hmm. and Richard Pryor making jokes in a Unemployment line. Yeah, the movie tries to uh, just put in, put in, put it, put it in your head that it's a comedy from the very beginning, but it never does a good job of actively selling it's a comedy for the rest of the movie, except for these little small like yeah. moments that don't, that don't feel earned, that feel very like just slapped on, and don't really add any those, don't add anything to the story to make them worth it, and it makes me it made me mad. Most of the comedy attempts this movie made me upset. That was kind of yeah, it's it. a lot of Richard Pryor isms that are. It's not very good. Yeah, it made, like I said at the very beginning, if someone did not know Richard Pryor's previous work or if it was someone that was just like, let's say I have kids one day, I'm going to tell them about Richard Pryor. This will not be one of the movies 
movies. When I was a kid, I didn't I, know who he was when I saw this movie. Exactly. I, I was just like, who's this guy and why is he so important? I yeah, don't know. Yeah, no, uh-huh. no, no clue. He uh-huh. seems terrible because, well, honestly, even as a kid, I would remember actors being like, I don't like how he did that. I, rem- I remember being like, this is bad. <laughs> like, I, like, I, or I wouldn't be able to articulate why I didn't like something, but I was like, ew, like, I don't want to watch this movie. I don't want Richard Pryor's legacy to be like spoiled by Superman 3 and I hate saying that because it seems so over the top but there was not a single moment in this movie where Richard Pryor sold himself as the charismatic talented individual that he is yeah. and that and that, that's crazy to me for a whole project how long it's, how long it may have taken for this movie to be made and you don't get a single moment of Richard Pryor Richard Pryorness shining through like that's yeah. wild that's so <laughs> that's almost hard if anything, <laughs> almost I would impossible say, if anything, I would say Ro- the villain Ross Webster like his, the, the actor who oh, man, I mean I put my nose away but mm. the actor who plays him like he's probably funnier than Pryor because he has this very deadpan kind of humor to him mm-hmm. which is what he's kind of famous for He he's in a lot of those kind of comedic roles Robert Vaughn Robert Vaughn Robert Vaughn yeah. yes no no he because he, he plays it so straight like straight laced villain yeah so he actually does fit the comic book aesthetic the, between him and Superman, he does fit the aesthetic yeah. really well. So and and, and Christopher Reeve is good. Yeah, he's good in this movie. Yeah, for what he is supposed to be doing. Maybe maybe that's why I was so upset with this movie. If Richard Pryor was like, if it was someone else playing the role, and they hadn't just wasted five million dollars on Richard, what do you Gordon, mean? The, the role doesn't make sense. I know. It does, that's maybe that's the main problem with the movie. Why then. is this like, here? Why is Gus here except for it to be Richard Pryor? Like you and, easily could have just had one of his what, either have Ross be a computer genius or one of his henchwomen be a computer genius. And the plot, nothing would change. Oh, Really, except for just Richard Pryor com- comedyisms, you would just cut out all those weird moments of like, "Look Slaps at me, I'm comedy. drunk and I'm doing something silly," which would just make this movie shorter, which would be great. You know, yeah. make, make it an hour forty-five instead of two hours. Oh my god, so much more manageable, so much more manageable t- content. But yeah, no, maybe that, that honestly is the main gripe. Like, if they had gotten rid of Gus and just made the Superman story about, how about you make it Weather Wizard? How about you do that? How, like, he's doing weather, yeah. we, he's doing Weather or, Wizard or do, shit, or, or do um, Brainiac because it's like he's yeah. fights an evil computer yeah, at yeah. one point. Or Brainiac, but just don't have Richard Pryor or have the Gus character because that's the only reason why he's here because you want that sweet, sweet Richard Pryor revenue for the for the, for the seats. Or if you're trying to do evil Superman, then why don't you do Bizarro? Have and the he, villains be like, "We'll make our own Superman," and have them like try to steal his DNA somehow, it, it, and then they make their own Bizarro, and he's and they make their own Superman, and then it becomes Bizarro because they make it wrong. Oh wow, it's wild that like we are, we're we're doing a better job of making making this movie again. Yeah, and also you can still have Christopher Reeves play both of them, have him be an evil Superman and a good Superman. And have fucked up makeup and shit. Yeah. Oh, I would I would I would watch that movie twice. Ha, have have the evil Superman like slowly deteriorate as it goes on. That's usually what happens to Bizarro. It, yes, that that's always the Bizarro. It usually starts out okay, and then it just starts getting dopier and more weird and skin cracking yeah. off and just like little like lines in his skin and whatnot and just that shows like the um the degradation more it would be really easy to do with the 80s with the makeup too it wouldn't yeah. be it wouldn't be hard to pull off whatever fuck it they didn't care about that they just wanted they i feel like they cared so much about richard Pryor that they kind of like just said fuck it to the scripts and they were like how can we make this five million dollars worth it as opposed to just making a product that stood on its own. This movie made money. It did it did well. I, it just it criti- it was just critically lauded. Oh yeah. As for for good reason. And everyone everyone in the movie knew it was crap too. They're like, this is terrible, I'm not doing this. And then I think Chris Reeve was probably under contract. But at the same time he did it. But he was he was just wanted like final approval on it. And then yeah. for four he did get final approval. And also Gene Hackman came back for the fourth one. This is the only one that doesn't have Gene Hackman that's Lex Luthor. Wow. Because even he was like this is crap. Wow. I thought Jim and he's Hammond, probably got enough because when you told me Jim Hammond didn't come come back for this one, I, I just uh, just assumed that he wasn't in the fourth one. So it just literally no, just he's in the fourth one. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's him and his 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 nephew. So, and something else, Luther. I forget Arthur Luther or like Alex Luther or some shit. I don't remember. Or whatever. It's it's what's his name? It's the dad from Two and a Half Men. Because he was like a pretty a famous in the eighties. He was in like Pretty in Pink or Sixteen Candles. I forget. I forget. John Cryer. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who actually plays Lex Luthor in the TV with Superman stuff now? Ew! Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's in like Supergirl. Gotcha. Is that still on? I don't, I don't watch Supergirl. <laughs> okay. Good. There's too many superhero shows. Too many things. Too many things to keep track of. Yeah. All right. So one of the other reasons we wanted to talk about Superman three is because I wanted to tell Damon a certain story that I think is a pretty interesting piece of history that relates to this podcast. That back in the nineteen 19- 40s, Superman actually fought the KKK. Real life, kind of. So, by, so I'm going to do this. Is I'm going to start by telling you a little quick origin of Superman, and then we're going to get into basically the origin of the Ku Klux Klan and how one day they collided. 
Sorry for lying to you folks. That's for next week. Tune in for the exciting conclusion of Superman vs. the KKK here at a black and white review. Deuces.